Hello everyone, my name is Cody Tredick and I'm with the Roman Catholic Diocese of Helena. Today I'm chatting with Father Bart Tollison about his new book, That Was Father Stu, a memoir of my priestly brother and friend, which is out now. Father Bart is a priest for the Diocese of Helena. He's currently the pastor at Our Lady of the Valley Parish in Helena, as well as the director of deacons, deacon formation, and clergy formation. He's also the supervisor for the Sycamore Tree Catholic Retreat Center. And I guess you get to add to that resume, uh, published you know, writer as I well. I now yeah. add to that resume, yeah. published writer. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's one job the bishop didn't give me. <laughs> That's right, you added that yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us, for anybody who doesn't know Father Stu's story or maybe hasn't seen the movie, which we'll talk more about, who was Father Stuart Long and what is this book about? Father Stuart Long was a guy, just a guy, born uh, in Seattle. And pretty quickly after he was born, his parents moved back to their native Helena. And he grew up here, went to Capitol High School in Helena and went on after a year at Western, decided he needed to go uh, back to Helena and attend Carroll College. He played football for Carroll College, and he was uh, basically an agnostic, didn't have any faith, any religion. Stu uh, went on after Carroll to try to become a professional boxer, and uh, he did all right for a while until he kind of got hurt. He, he messed up his jaw, and then he had to retire reluctantly. He was working as a bouncer and kind of moping around the house for a while. And finally, one day, his mom had the idea that he should go try to become an actor because he liked movies. He packed his stuff, moved to L.A., was staying with a friend, got some headshots made, started uh, auditioning for different acting roles, was usually cast as an extra and didn't pay a lot of money. And he just said, I'm, I can't do this. And he went on and he became a uh, uh, he got a job as a security guy at the Norton Simon Museum in California, and he worked his way up, ended up doing uh, security and a little HR. At one point, he had over 60 employees, is what I was told, and very well liked. He also fell in love at this point, kind of a, a first strong love, and then the motorcycle accident happened, and Stu really almost died. In fact, you know, he described to me one time that he had an out-of-body experience and could vaguely remember it, but he knew he was spared. At that point, his girlfriend also kind of went back to her Catholic faith and basically told Stu, if you want to marry me, you got to become Catholic. Now, Stu before would have been very reluctant to do that, but at this point, because of that accident, something opened in his heart, like, why was I spared? Maybe I've got to rethink about God. And he took to the Catholic faith very quickly and was baptized at the Easter Vigil in 1994. And uh, at that point, he thought that God was calling him to be a priest, but he didn't want to be a priest. So he wrestled with that for a good deal of time. You know, after a few years, uh, quit his job at the museum, worked at a Catholic high school, finally decided to sell everything he owned and go out and try to become a Franciscan friar in New York City. And then the friars just said, you know, you're not cut out for us, go back to Helena and check uh, with your home bishop and see if he would take you as a seminarian. And Stu did, he became a seminarian for the Diocese of Helena, went to Mount Angel Seminary for his theology studies. And at that point, um, when, I, when he was in third theology and I was in third theology, just considering coming to Helena to become a, a seminarian, I was one for Dallas, Texas at the time, because of family moving up here, I decided that to look into switching, and I met Stu via email, and we became friends from that point, and we go along in our story together. So what kind of led you to decide to write this story? Uh, like what, you know, what kind of precipitated, you know, deciding that this was the right time to tell Stu's story, two story from your perspective? Right, so in 2015 was when Mark Wahlberg bought the rights to Stu's life, and everyone, in the Diocese of Helena and kind of around the country were very excited. I mean, Mark Wahlberg, this big star, he's gonna do a movie about Stu, this will be fantastic. And uh, Mark hired several different screenwriters that, to give it a shot. And he just felt like they never got Stu's story right. But at the beginning of January 2020, after I thought there would not be a movie, I was digging through some old emails and just stumbled the, on this one from Stu, and actually uh, several from Stu. And I read them and I was like, this is pretty profound. And I thought, I don't want this story to be lost. So I was like, I called Bill and I said, what do you think if I just wrote my memoirs about Stu? And he goes, I think it's a good idea, especially if there's not a movie. 
So I, I knew a lot of other stories from some other people that are mentioned in the book, and I kind of got their stories. In June of 2020, I finished the first draft before we even thought there'd be a movie. And I was like, something's not finished with this. Something's not right with this. So I just put it on the shelf, and I said, maybe someday I'll get back to it. And then in March 2021, uh, Mark uh, Wahlberg's production company announces Father Stu, the movie's coming, Mel Gibson, and it was Rosie, uh, Rosie Ross, who had done a script, and Mark was very happy with it, and uh, they were going to plunge ahead and make this movie about Stu's life. None of us knew what it was going to be about, for sure, and um, at that point, several people that had read the first draft of the book said, oh, it's time to get back at this because this is going to be this will be big, and you'll need to get your story out there, and let's just see how it goes. Well, little did I know that my, the story in Stu's life and after his death would keep going, and so I was able to include stuff about the movie and the book and things like that, which is really I was thankful for. The story of Stu's life, obviously, they have to make creative differences and changes to his story. But can you talk a little bit about like? you know, the movie and kind of the part of Stu's life that talks about and then how you decided to tell a different kind of, you know, chapter yeah. in that story and how you focus a little more on So that. I know Rosie, she had, they, they had done interviews with, with Bill and all of Stu's family. They had done interviews with some of Stu's friends in California. And they hadn't really talked to anyone in Helena. And I think Rosie, when she saw all these notes and she was like, this is a mess. I mean, what, what, is, what are all these things? And she just began to set at work about saying, I'm going to tell the story about this guy who becomes a priest with what I have. She condensed a lot of characters, created some fictional characters. Um, and I think she, within a two-hour time frame, told a story that has all the big beats of Stu's life in it, in the movie, but misses a lot of the details and doesn't go beyond to his priesthood. And so, obviously, well, you know, as that was coming out and the first time I saw it, you know, I talked to Mark Wahlberg and I said, there's not uh, much about his priesthood. And I'm, I've got a book, really kind of a first draft that I was going to do before your movie came together. And I said, what would you think about me moving forward with it? And he goes, absolutely. He goes, I'll support it. I'll do what, what I can to help you with it. Because um, he goes, I know there's a lot more stories and we couldn't tell these in this film. So uh, we were able to take that forward. But what I realized is, I, you know, trying to figure out where do you end it? Do you end it at his death? And I was like, oh, Stu's so much bigger than his death. And just had these ongoing things with people where they encountered Stu after his death and asked for his intercession and had these amazing sort of events, some of them somewhat tragic, but all of them ending in hope. And I was like, I think heaven and Stu are pointing a light onto something they want me to do. And so, you know, the, the third part of the book is really taking it into that, that area. Because honestly, when we live our lives, I mean, Stu lived a, an interesting life, a, a funny life, a beautiful life, a tough life. Um, it's an amazing story of his life. But the goal for Stu and the goal for all of us should be what's going to happen when we die and what happens. And Stu and I got to talk about that a little bit for himself. I knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to die. And I was like, we're still going to be friends, and I have some things I'd like for you to do. And he was like, well, I'm going to be in purgatory. And I was like, I'll help you with the purgatory part if you'll help with the other part. And I think Stu's kept his end of the bargain. It's a beautiful thing to think any one of us could be a saint, and we're all called to be a saint, which really means that we have a mission beyond this life, a mission with Jesus Christ. The saints have ongoing missions. I mean, you know, I don't think St. Anthony's around just to help people find their car keys for the rest of his eternity, but he's there on a mission for, for the Lord. And it's, a, it's an interesting thing to have that uh, army of heavenly hosts, so to speak, at our uh, disposal to help us. And to experience it firsthand is something uh, quite beautiful and, and really, to, to a certain degree for me as a priest, even life-changing. I found in the, especially in the final third of the book, uh, after Father Stu has passed away, it was incredibly moving, your own reflections on suffering, on being with people through suffering and how you see the cross and how you find love and ultimately how that leads us to hope and to trust in the Lord. Could you tell us a little bit about how, for you, writing this book or putting these stories to paper helped you to kind of reflect and process on all of these different ideas uh, that were going on at that time in your life while you were with Stu? 
The Mass is both a suffering and a resurrection. It's, it's, it's both. And Stu's life was both a suffering and a resurrection. And so what I've come to realize in, in asking for Stu's intercession is part of, of our lives here is to carry the cross. And so for all of us, there's a certain degree of suffering and resurrection. And, you know, maybe before it's like we're always praying, don't let them suffer, take it away, help them, don't let the, you know. But then you realize oftentimes we feel like our prayers aren't heard because what we wanted to happen doesn't happen. And what I've begun to realize is that sometimes the suffering is what makes us ready, even if uh, God calls us home and God calls us to another mission. And then those that are left here to experience suffering can find it transformative because we meet Jesus in that. Uh, and sometimes we're afraid to meet Jesus in his suffering. We, we, we want to meet Jesus in things that are easy, but these things are hard. And Stu met the Lord in the hardest of times. And that's why he was such a profound minister. And so for me, is seeing often as with prayers for intercession is sometimes amazing and beautiful miracles, uh, amazing and beautiful conversions, but also this ability to walk through suffering. Oh, suffering isn't easy, and it's not something we should be running to, but when it comes, then we know that the Lord is with us, and um, we triumph through that suffering, through Jesus and in Jesus Christ. One of the great things and the beautiful things that has come from Stu's life and his ministry is a group of people that are you know, excited to continue his good work. And so is there anything you'd want to talk about about Beyond 227 or how people can take part in continuing, you know, kind of what he started? Yeah, we weren't sure where that was going to go. I mean, when I was trying to think of a title of the book, uh, the first title we had was Beyond 227. And because 227 was Stu's room at Big Sky. And so that's where he went, ran his church, basically, the last four years of his life was out of a, a kind of a nursing home room. And uh, people were like, well, no one's going to know what that is. You know, you got to put the name Father Stu in there. And, and so it made sense to me. But I, I thought, what did Stu want for us to remember him by was to keep on the mission he believed in. And so uh, along with myself and some of his close friends, we kind of talked about it and, and said, let's start something with this movie. His story is going to be well known, and we need to have something that uh, people can contribute to to carry on his mission. And uh, so far, we've had some amazing success with some of the events we've had, some of the work that we've been able to do. And it's, it's, it's like we're, if Stu were here, I just know he'd be very happy. Um, with what we're doing, and he's kind of guiding it anyway. So um, it's, it's, it's a good thing. So beyond227.org to find out more information about that and what we're up to. And, you know, we grow a little bit at a time, but, but we're definitely increasing. What do you hope that people take away from the book? Well, I, I want people, Ignatius was very helpful in trying to say, make it really, really simple and readable. So I hope it's a good read. You know, I hope it's the kind of book and the feedback is, you know, we can't really put it down once we start it. Um, and that's, that's a good sign. But more so than that, I want people to know that in the midst of their tragedies, in the midst of their sufferings, their trials, they're not alone and they can meet Jesus Christ in those. And that Jesus will transform them one way or the other to the greater glory of God and to the heavenly kingdom and to help us live our mission here on earth and also to ready us for our mission that will come after we're called. And I also hope that, you know, realizing that we have intercessors who are canonized and we, we pray for their help, but, you know, Stu is my friend and I prayed for his help a lot after he's been gone. It's an act of faith. You know, I don't have any sort of a video of him working from heaven necessarily, though I think God's given me some clear signs. And so to ask people to, to pray for his intercession and sometimes even uh, others who have passed their intercession because they pass on to mission with Jesus. And the mission is to, to bring all of us home to the Lord, all of us safely to the heavenly kingdom. So if, if you can take those thoughts away and have some hope, have some laughs, um, and let the Holy Spirit lead you, then it, thanks be to God, it's, it's done well what it was meant to do and what Stu's story is meant to do. Well, thank you so much, Father Bart, for chatting with us today and for talking about the book. I was one of those that couldn't put it down. Okay. <laughs> I, that good. was wonderful. Thanks, Cody. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, thank you again. 
That was Father Stu. A memoir of my priestly brother and friend is out now. You can get it from online retailers such as Ignatius Press at Ignatius.com. You can also get it from beyond227.org or on Amazon. It's a wonderful book and I definitely encourage you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching today.